Yo, yeah, wait. So how much? The, what's the most you made in a month? In a month off of the car rental business, I'd probably say about maybe 60, 70 bands off of it. Yeah. yeah. Summertime in the heat. It's coming up soon. Typically August, September, October. Those are the busy months. So what about the other months then? Does it does it make um, enough money in those months that it covers you for the entire year? Yeah, 100%. It'll make enough to where like you, you still paying all your car notes and making a profit. It might not make you the 70, 80 bands, but it'll still make you 30, 40, 50 K. Mm -hmm. So you're still making good money. If you have the right cars, I always tell people, as long as you got the right cars, you will never look for demand. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yes, sir. Uh, J-Hill, J-Hill Podcast, we here. Hey, um, so I told you we are going to just make this real smooth, candid conversation. Conversation, man. I like that. So Mike, the businessman, you sell cars. Get straight to it. I rent, you rent cars. cars. Yes, sir. You rent cars, right? Yes, sir. Is it just high luxury cars or is it all type of cars? No, I do everything, right? I got the exotics, the luxury cars, and I also have a small fleet of economy cars, yeah. How, when you say fleet, how many? Because you say fleet. I, don't, I got a small. It's quality over quantity, bro. No, nah, I got like twelve cars. Yeah, I don't be, I don't be doing like thirty. No, nah, I don't need all that stress, bro. So why, why only twelve? It's because if you got the right cars, you can still make a big bag off of that. You don't need to have too many. Yeah. So it's strictly you, your business, like no, yes, yeah, mine. Don't do Toro, no nothing. I don't do Toro. It's straight private rentals, and what that means is we rent direct to customer, kind of like what the big boys do. Your Hertz, your Avis, your Enterprise. Right. They rent direct to customer. Cause I don't know about you, but I don't like sharing my coins with nobody. Right. When you do Toro, they take like up to forty percent. Yeah, they be taxing. Uh, they be bro. taxing people. Yeah, I, was, so I, was, I, I did Toro for a little bit, and they be taking too much money. And they add that trip fee on top. Yeah, making more money than you. And then it's not even. And then when you try to like, I've, I. Thank God it ain't never happened to me. But I had a couple friends who try to make the deals on the side. Yeah. And then the moment they try to make a deal on the side, yeah. they somebody totaled their car. And it's, oh shoot, <laughs> it's done. It's done for. You can't. You can't have no insurance claim, no nothing. Yeah. It's, it's done for. Well, see, that's where I come in, right? So I teach people how to properly make those deals on the side, but make sure you're covered the right way. How you do that? Oh yeah. So that's yeah, on, pretty much, man. So it all comes down to risk mitigation. Before I do that, I gotta give you a little bit of my background, bro. After I graduated college, man, I got into I worked at an insurance company for a while. Mm. All right. So I had auto insurance experience, right? And fast forward several years later, I did risk management for banks you might have heard of, like JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America. I worked in their risk management department. So pretty much we're the ones that keep the hackers out of the system. Mm -hmm. So it's all about risk. So I for me, risk plus insurance and the car rental game was like it just everything just clicked. Right. So whenever I'm running out of car, bro, I'm vetting my customers. I got to I gotta know everything about you before I just hand over my keys. I want to make sure you're not going to dip out with my car. Mm. So I like to know when I hand over my keys, I could go to sleep at night and not worry if that car is coming back. Right. And if something does happen, I'm getting paid by insurance. Wait, how you vet? How you, how you vet? Because oh, I yeah. can seem like I'm cool. I can come across like I'm, you know what I'm saying? Nah, bro. We, uh, yeah, you cool and I'll rock with you and all. <laughs> bro, even if my mama came to rent a car, you still got to follow the process. We got processes and send your driver's license. We're going to run your driving record. Okay. Yeah, send me over your insurance too. I got to make sure your insurance will cover my car. Okay. And that's very important. A lot of people don't do that, and that's how they get into those situations. Okay, so you was... Finish it with your story Finish it before we get yeah. to the business. Yeah, so pretty much the way it works is say you wanted to come, say you flew out to Dallas, right? You mm -hmm. wanted a Lambo, right? You're like, yo, Mike, hit, I'm, I'm coming into the airport. Meet me at the airport with a Lambo. Bet, all I'm going to tell you to do is send me your insurance card. Right. All right, you're going to send over your insurance card. And if you have a full coverage insurance policy, you can rent a car anywhere in the country and your insurance policy will transfer over to that yeah, car. Exactly. So we take advantage of that. Yeah. All right, so you can come in, and once I verify your insurance, I'm happy. I hand you the keys. But wait, I thought it had to be through, like, one of those big companies because I literally just had this situation mm -hmm. happen where um, they said they wouldn't do it for Toro, yeah. but they do, they would do it for, like, a Hertz or uh, You got uh, me giving out all the game, yeah, man. man <laughs> he you, asking bro. good questions. Yeah, <laughs> I love so, it. I love it. Nah, so the way that works, good question, right? They, they got those mom-and-pop type companies. We don't mess with those. If your insurance company closes, 
closes at 5 p.m. and they're closed on weekends, we're not rocking with them. Right. Yeah, all well, of them. Well, that's like Geico. No, well, Geico, nah, the Geico's, the State Farms, all states, they'll cover. Yeah, only thing Geico won't cover is if the car is over a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Geico don't pay for those. But it's crazy because, like I said, I just went. So I, I think I did budget, right? Or okay. Or something like that. Uh huh. But when I was saying if I if I could transfer it to Toro, they wouldn't do it. But if they do, I, Avis, they can do it. So how can they cover your your fleet of cars then? Yeah. So pretty much the way it works is we call once once we get your insurance card, we'll call with the insurance company. So we'll put a three we'll do a three way call with you, me, and the insurance company. And I'll just be like, hey, I got your client Jay here looking to rent my Lambo. I just want to make sure that his full coverage insurance policy will transfer over to my Lambo. And guy could be like, okay, yeah, sure. What kind of car is it? Blah 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 blah. All right, yeah, he's good. His policy is active. He's on there as a driver. Yeah, he's good to rent. The big problem where people make a mistake at it is. You need to know what they call the property uh, damage he has on his insurance policy. Okay. That's very important. The property damage is how much Geico is going to pay if you total my Lambo. Mm. So let's say you got the cheapest insurance policy because you, you being cheap, you don't want to pay you know, for your policy. You just wanted to pay peanuts, right? You got right. the cheapest policy insurance policy they got. If your property damage is, say, only $20,000 and you rent a Lambo that costs 200000 Geico's only going to pay $20,000. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to pay two hundred. So you gotta. So while we're on the phone, all I gotta do is tell Geico, I just need you to increase his property damage limits mm -hmm. to the value of the car you're but renting. You can, you can do that just for that trip, right there, just for that trip. And it cost, bro, it's cheap. It barely costs five dollars or ten dollars to do, mm. and that's it. They upgrade the policy right then and there, and then you can hand over the keys. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's pause. Before, yeah. Before we keep going, yeah. let's rewind. For yeah, we we got deep already, real quick. Let's rewind. <laughs> so how much was how much money was you making before you started doing this? All right, so I was in corporate America, right? So I was doing corporate. Um, Had probably a making. Dollars. I was making about a hundred, hundred and ten thousand dollars a year. How, how long ago was this? This was barely just three and a, three years ago, bro. Three okay. years, three and a half years ago. That matters though, cause yeah. like a hundred thousand ten years ago was pretty decent that was that was good money yeah <laughs> no nah, this was just three years ago bro it was yeah. three years ago okay. and you know why i left bro um man i bust my behind for this bank i was working at and my my boss promised me a promotion and a raise i got the promotion i got the fancy title bro they only gave me a two thousand dollar raise now, i'm sitting i'm trying to retire my mom's i'm like yo this ain't gonna work because i lost my dad and i'm like i need to retire my mom's i can't be how long I got to work for corporate America just yeah. to make a decent income? So that's when I knew I had to do something else. So I had buddies that were doing car rentals and they were making decent money. And just because I had that risk management background, I had that insurance background, it just clicked for me. This makes sense. All I started doing was investing in all kinds of mentorships, got my credit right, and I jumped right in, bro. Yo, how, at, at what point of your life um, did you start making six figures or was it you've been, um, let's take three, three, three years ago yeah. before you hopped in the car yeah. rental? Right. How long did it take you to start making six figures in, in Bro, corporate? Corporate America, maybe after my, man, I probably say 2017. Mm. I made my first hundred thousand salary. So from 2017 to 2020. Yeah. You was making like six figures. Six. Yeah. But don't forget, they tax that. Yeah, yeah, insurance. That's what I'm going. That's what I'm going. <laughs> so I'm just wondering, right? So yeah. you, you, you 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 tap into six figures. I feel like for for all of us, we we hear six figures coming up. Like Fact. six figures is a lot of money. We think, that, right? And then we start making six figures, and it's yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah, I know it ain't nothing. <laughs> it really ain't nothing, bro. Like, like sheesh. Yeah, if you got a family, yeah, it definitely ain't nothing. Damn. So yeah. when you said when you when you at the moment you said I'm a, all right, I'm a, I'm gonna do my own business, right? Right. Did you just quit the job or did cold you turkey? Both? Cold turkey. Damn. For real, cold turkey, bro. I just do both. Nah, because I, funny enough, I ran into a guy called Neo. <laughs> I ran, I ran into Neo at a conference mm -hmm. at a recession proof Miami. And I told Neo about my fears. I told him I was in corporate and I wanted to just quit and pursue my dreams. Mm -hmm. And but I'm scared. He's like, Why are you scared? Like you need to conquer that fear and just go ahead and do it. It don't work unless you work. Wait, 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 we skipping some stuff, bro. Hold yeah. up. Paul, bro, hold up. <laughs> Welcome to J Hill Podcast, bro. We, we can't skip these stuff. Sheesh. Why would you even at the conference though? Because yeah. the conference is for entrepreneurs. I'm pretty sure right. you had to pay to be there. Yeah. Like why was you even there? Yeah, because I was trying to find out what to do. I'm trying to leave corporate. I knew corporate wasn't for me anymore. So I found I was watching YouTube and I seen Neo and him five hundred on a yeah. YouTube video. And there was a con they were promoting a conference. I'm like, bet, let me tap How much in. You drop to, at the conference? For the conference how much did i drop it was just a couple hundred bucks man maybe a hundred two hundred dollar ticket all right yeah. that ain't bad because usually when them niggas be promoting shit be like fifty thousand seventy nah, five nah, <laughs> nah, nah. that came later that came later okay no yeah i got into neo's inner circle that came later okay oh yeah so you went to the conference yeah yo how so 
talk, 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 tell the people about how important it is for the for the naysayers, for the non-believers yeah. about being in that room, right? Ooh. And you spent two hundred dollars to be in this room. Yes, sir. And a lot of people they look at it like, and I was one of them before I start, before I met Neil, before I met um, David Shang, before I met Ramel Smitty, yeah, like. David Omar, I, I was kind of like on the fence, like, man, I'm not paying $200 for this room. They just finessed me out my money. Yeah. You paid that $200. I though. did. What came from it and how important was that to be in that room? Benjamin Franklin says it best. Benjamin Franklin said, if you empty if you empty the coins in your wallet into your mind, mm. your mind will fill up your wallet with coins. Mm. Bro, the more you learn, the more you earn. And when I went with that $200, guys, I kid you not, that had to be the best investment I made in my life, hands down. Because that, that exposed me to a world I didn't even know existed. A whole world of financial literacy. A whole world about taking, taking ownership of your credit, fixing up your credit, credit, leveraging the power of an LLC. Mm. Bro, setting up this car owner company, if I told people you could do the same thing too with no cash, no cars, no credit, would you believe me? You could do the same thing too today, no cash, no cars, no credit. Mm. Just have an LLC. And that's the stuff I took away from this conference because, see, education, what it does is it exposes you to information. Only difference between you and the next guy that's a millionaire is information. He's got information you don't have. So we have to constantly keep educating ourselves. Right. That's the way we elevate right. ourselves. Damn, so it was definitely worth it. Oh, 100%, how, how long, bro. How, how, all right, so how, because you know, bro, no, nah, no, nah, we, we talk, I'm, this is like. Candy my conversations, homies. let's do it, yeah, homies, facts, right? yeah. They want to know how long it took for you to start making that bag. Like, you went yeah. to the conference, you paid $200. Yeah. How soon or how long did it take you from that conference to you really starting this business and making right. some money from it? So I would say typically I, I, when I got started, I immediately got information. I started fixing my credit. That probably took me a few months, two, three months, getting all my ducks in a row. Right. So I quit my job and I was just living off my savings. Mm -hmm. I think I probably had like ten to fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in savings at the time. I saved up for years. And that's what I was living off of while I was getting my LLC right, getting my credit right. And then I started planning my move to get into the car rental business. Mm. The second I had my LLC straight, had my credit good, that's when I started buying them cars. Bro, if you got decent credit, they will give you them What's cars. Decent? I had like a, I had like a seven something, low 700. And that's all I needed. And you just got, you grabbed one car? How many, how many oh, no, no. First, see, now, there you go. So, at the time, <laughs> yeah, right? Good, again, yeah, good point. Right so, at the time, right, there were these, these YouTube gurus out there preaching that people should go buy 30 cars in 30 days. And they were giving the hacks online on how to do that. The idea was, say you buy a car on January the 1st, mm -hmm. you can go January the 2nd, go buy another car. The dealership, the next day doesn't know you just bought a car the day before. Mm -hmm. Because it takes 30 days before those cars hit your credit. Jeez. So, that's a hack. So you could run it up, buy as many cars as you want in one month before they start showing on your credit. So that's what these gurus on YouTube were preaching at the time. And so I went and I did that. Um, do not make that same mistake, y'all. That almost wrecked me and bankrupt me. That's bankrupt several people. Mm. Because what happened was, and that's part of the learning experience, right? Because I was going off a free game. I didn't have a mentor telling me what to do. Bro, literally a month later after I bought 12 cars off the, off the rip, I went out to a dealership and I bought a bunch of cars. A month later, I was out with my family. We're, we're buying some stuff. I needed to apply for some store credit. I got declined. Mm. They're like, my DTI was too high. I'm like, what does DTI mean? They said my debt to income ratio was too high. Mm. That I owed too much money versus what I made. And it was because of all those cars I bought. It hit my credit and it crashed my score. Mm. Um, and so I was jammed up. I didn't know what to do. And I couldn't get credit anywhere. And so I had to figure out ways, okay, how do I get those cars off my credit and how do I do it the right way? You know, I was using leverage, I was using the bank's money, but I was using it the wrong way. I was putting all those things on my personal credit. The way you're meant to do this the right way is have all them things on your LLC. Mm. You got a well-structured LLC, you can get a hundred cars. That's the way to get into this business the right way. How did you get them off though? Yeah, so I had to, bro, credit repair, and then I saw I was able to use my LLC to start refinancing a lot of those cars oh, okay. off of my personal into my LLC. Okay. That's okay. how I got them all off. Damn. Yeah. But so so even if like you say I want to fleet, right? Let's say yeah. somebody go get 3 4 cars. Right. That got to be scary though cuz like you still got to rent them out. You still got to get the clientele. You Facts. Know what I'm saying like Yeah. 100%. How, how is that? How you get a clientele? It's not that hard, actually. There's three ways I teach people to get clientele. You can do it organic, bro, like social currency. You know people. If you know people, you know, got friends, families, everybody needs to know you as a rental car plug. Mm. Put the word out there. You know, let everybody know. They'll send you business. That's Facebook Marketplace. That's free. Put your car on there. I'm thinking, bro, if I got a Lambo, I'm, what are you renting for, like $200 a day, something like that? 
I don't rent my Lambo out for fourteen hundred a day. Right? Ain't nobody, bro. Ain't nobody paying the people I know ain't paying no fourteen hundred dollars for no. They rental. do, bro. You'd be surprised, bro. And don't judge me. A lot of my clientele are like, no oh, boys. Why? I don't know what they. I don't judge them. Mm. All I know is they pay cash, cash out their money. <laughs> hey, the money clears. It clears the bank. I, I could withdraw that money. I don't ask what they do, but they take good care of my cars and they pay a lot of money for my cars. Yo, that's crazy. My so my guy does um uh. What is it? Airbnb. Yeah. And he noticed that anytime he do like a rental for like a cheap, if he just do a, a discount cheap, or something, yeah. they Those are the first customers. Up. Oh, like, yeah. Bro, oh, like yeah. his crib be disgusting. But yeah. Bro, when he charged an arm and a leg, yeah. it's like. Premium customers. He come back, they didn't clean the house. They, exactly. They took the sheets off, put it in the wash machine. There you go. Because you're attracting premium clientele. They understand mm. the value of the commodity you're renting or selling. Mm. Bro, but when you go cheap, that's the problem with these platforms. They attract cheap customers. That's why they be trashing your cars. Mm. All right. So that's one way you guys could do it. Organic marketing. Another, when you start to scale and you get to like a level where I'm at, you got to do paid ads. Mm. So I'm doing your Google ads and your Facebook ads, your search engine optimization, things mm. like that. That's how my phone stay ringing. All right, so wait, somebody got a rental car right now. They might got two or three. Yeah. Right? What's the hack in the, the Google ads? How, like, how are you how are you putting that information in? Yeah, so pretty much. Give me some I, game. Give yeah, some, I don't game. do, I, I'm not an ads guy. I hire people to do my Google ads. So pretty much, yeah. I mean, they, they run the ads. It, it doesn't cost a whole lot of money. And then pretty much Google will rank your company at the top of the Google search. It, it'll show up on the front page. Damn. And people will just call you for your car. Damn. That's how we get calls all day, every day. It's really not that ha- hard. It, it works if you work. Man, you say it's not that hard. It bro. ain't. If it wasn't that hard, everybody would be doing it. They should. Mm. They should. If you put your mind to it, you actually go out there and do it, it'll work, bro. That's the way the universe so is, 720 man. 720 credit score. I get my You don't LLC. even need that, bro. No credit. Get busy. No way. Okay. I'll, break the, I'll break the play down for you. Break it down. All right? Say you have bad credit. All right? Do you know people? I need you to know. If you don't have credit, you don't have money, you got to bring something to the table. Okay. At least bring social currency. You need to know people. I know people. Right? There you How go. Bet. You know? So all you start off as what they call a broker. Okay. Okay. A broker basically is a middleman. When, when stars come into town and they need to rent a car, they're not calling Avis. They're not calling MVP Miami or whatever. Nah. They're calling their boy, their homeboy Tyrone. Yo, Tyrone, I need a car. Get me five cars. And then Tyrone is the one that's hooking them up, organizing them. Tyrone acts as a broker. Tyrone will call people like me. Like, yo, my man's is coming into town. He wants these cars. He wants your Lambos. Give me a wholesale deal. I give Tyrone, say my Lambo goes for fourteen hundred. I'll give it to Tyrone at a thousand. Tyrone makes an extra four hundred on top. Brokers make a lot of money. Matter of fact, fifty to sixty percent of my business comes from brokers. I'm gonna even shock you even more. Bro, eighty percent of the car rental companies websites you see out there. They're not real company. They're owned by brokers. They don't own any other cars on those websites. You would never know. When you book, you call them to book, they contact people like me. Like, yo, I got a booking for a Rolls Royce, or I got a booking for a Lexus. Can I use yours? And make some money on top. Yo, you know what's crazy, bro? The whole world is corrupt. <laughs> he it. said the whole world is corrupt. <laughs> they hustling, bro. Like, That's legal. You know, But you know yeah. who else does that, bro? Ooh. Not to, like, go off yeah. <laughs> the bank. Facts. <laughs> like, they take your money. Yeah, they like, go run. Yeah, like, that's why when you ask for like a certain amount. Yeah, you gotta come in. They ain't got take, it. Yeah. Like they <laughs> ain't got my money. Like my <laughs> yes, money. Yeah. Like, they gotta go get it from someone else. Facts. That's exactly what's happening. Yo, bro. that's crazy. Yeah, that's the way, bro. Brokers make a lot of money. Matter of fact, I had this one deal, yo. I rented out my um, my Lamborghini when I first bought my Lamborghini Huracan. Second it arrived, right? Somebody rented it out. He wanted to rent it out for thirty thousand dollars a month. Mm. And he ended up keeping that car for almost three months. Pay me seventy bands. A broker brought me that deal. Bro, he could have bought one. He could. Some people don't want to put their names on paper. I don't ask questions. Mm. Somebody kept my BMW i8 for a whole year, paying me forty seven hundred a week. Bro, like you can make a lot of money in this business. So if you don't, if you're a broker, you don't have no cash, no cars, no credit. That's the best way to start off as. Start off as a broker, leveraging other people's cars. Mm. All right, leveraging other. If you have family members that got good credit, joint venture with them. You bring the rental knowledge, you use their cars, and go run the play. Sheesh. And then, but here's what I always tell my brokers though I tell them, be working on yourself too at the same time. All right, I don't want you to stay where you're at. Go get an LLC. Start cleaning up your credit. It's 2023. Your credit works. Credit repair works. No, thanks. Clean your credit up. That way, you can also boss up and start renting out your own vehicles. Yo, this episode is sponsored by the Morning Meetup. 
Man, shout out to my guy David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created the morning meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. Yo, wait. So how much? The, what's the most you made in a month? In a month off of the car rental business? I'd probably say about maybe 60, 70 bands off of it. Yeah. Summertime in the heat. It's coming up soon. Typically August, September, October. Those are the busy months. So what about the other months then? Does it does it make um, enough money in those months that it covers you for the entire year? Yeah, 100%. It'll make enough to where like you, you still paying all your car notes and making a profit. It might not make you the 70, 80 bands, but it'll still make you 30, 40, 50 K. Mm -hmm. So you're still making good money. If you have the right cars, I always tell people, as long as you got the right cars, you will never look for demand. Yo, so are you paying your cars off or are you just doing a um, lease? Heck no. We're leveraging these cars. I don't like leasing cars. We finance them. Okay. And then once you get your LLC straightened out the right way, I get these cars zero money down. But I thought you can like, I thought it's smarter to lease because then you can like swap them out. Yeah, but the problem with leasing is you get limited miles. Okay. And you renting the cars out. You're going to go over on the okay. miles. So That's when you problem. financing, you never just like, you never, when you get all your bread, you never like just pay it off or nothing like that? Never. Heck no. Why would I want to do that? Mm. Nah, bro. I want to come into the game with as little skin as possible. I only ask that because I'm assuming if it's paid off, now we don't have to pay no car note. Now mm. it's just straight. Nah, profit. I'd rather finance that month for five, six, seven, however long, and then let the car pay itself off. Okay. I'm not using my coins to pay off no car. Okay. The only time I put my money in the game is with certain exotics. Yeah, the bank's going to need you to come to the table with something. Okay. okay. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Yep. All right. Wait. All right. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. So you do have some, I don't want to say low end, but you have yeah. all type of cars. Yeah, right? economy too, yeah. So when your economy cars, I yeah. mean, it's cheaper than the high end Big ones, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, are the customers still the same? Because we just said, like, the people that's paying high end, right. they take care of your shit. No, nah, so obviously, yes. The economy customers are not never going to be as, as good as the exotic and higher luxury cars, right? But if you follow our blueprint, we got the economy car blueprint where we teach people how you can make $1,000 per month net on each economy car you own. All right, cool. Let's so you got to so let's yeah. have, let's talk about it. you got to think about the blueprint right now. Yeah. The game. There you go. So imagine this, bro. You you maybe you 18 years old. You you your parents bought you a car and instead of having to go work 9 to 5 at Pizza Hut or whatever, you can go put that car to work. Here's the way to here's the play, right? You could put that car, rent that out to like Uber drivers, DoorDash drivers. Mm. Who do you think supplies them with those cars? It's car rental companies like us. Mm. And we charge them a minimum of 250 to 400 dollars a week. Mm. And they pay, bro. So that's in four in four weeks. That's almost sixteen hundred dollars you could get off of an economy car. How much are your payments on that car? Like three, four hundred dollars a month. Oh, there you go. That's how I come up with those numbers. A thousand net, and I'm being conservative. If you just no. charge two fifty. No, I, I, I can I, listen. I just text my man, right? So yeah. I, I'm renting some my car, and it's cheap. It's great price. There you go. It's like two fifty a week. But I just looked at my uh my cash app, and yeah. I'm like, bro, find my pay you on this. <laughs> there you go. Guess I'm what? At, I'm like, bro, this. My car no wouldn't even be half of this shit. These guys, for whatever reason, maybe they ain't got good credit. Whatever mm. reason it is, they need a car to get from point A to point B. Yeah, facts. You never know. Because in my situation, it's not even, it's just my car messed up or something like that. Yeah. And I just needed a whip yeah. for the time being. But the go. time being turned into a uh, oh, long time. Three. Two, three, <laughs> boom. So, and damn. that's the reason why people like the economy car play because it's long term. Mm. All right. Because these guys, like the way I run it, I'm not doing no daily rentals. I ain't playing that $30 crap. Nah, I ain't right. 30 a day. Nah, it's weekly minimum or okay. monthly. And these guys, number two, they don't want to see you as much as you don't want to see them. Right. So once you hand over the keys, they're gone. They got to go work. Yeah. Let them work. Right. And then every week, hey, cash at me. Mm -hmm. And send me send a picture a of the mileage. Send me a picture of the mileage so I make sure you're not going over on the miles. That's it. Damn. Sheesh. So, okay. Wait, wait. So how are you getting... How are you getting 
the clientele though. If, if yeah. you want to rent it to Uber drivers, how am I how am I getting those customers? Several ways, bro. The best way is just organic, yo. Facebook Marketplace. Put that car up on Facebook Marketplace. They gonna blow you up. Mm. They gonna blow you up on Facebook. Just take good pictures, post it on Facebook Marketplace. That's all you need to do. Or if you know Uber Hangouts, Facebook groups where Uber drivers hang out, or drive by your airport, go and meet them and let them know what you got. Damn. So now you about you about to do a workshop, right? Yeah, got a free uh, workshop, y'all. I've got a free workshop. Um, it's Rental Profits Masterclass. All right, I'm teaching you guys everything you need to know to get started in the car rental business. All right, it's a free one. Normally, I charge for this stuff. I'm giving it to y'all for free. So y'all no, tap in. Wait, 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 wait. Why yeah. is it for free? Now yeah, we just I don't now I'm. I'm I'm scared of it now. I don't even. It's free. I don't even know. <laughs> why, why it's free? Nah, bro. Because I'm giving out the sauce. I want people to come learn. I, bro, I've been doing this for a while, and I just I'm not gatekeeping. I want to teach people how to get started, what and then I give about? people an opportunity at the end, though, okay. to advance. If people want to advance and take it a step further, I give them an opportunity at the end of the master class to advance. To, to and you got paid for that. Yeah, if you want to advance, hundred percent. Yeah, most people want to tap in and get more sauce. What's yeah. the, why? Why do you do that? I I, hear, I see so many entrepreneurs. Yeah. It's like a. It's like. It's like a never. It's a, like a never ending revolving door type thing, yeah. right? You you go to their website or you go to their uh their class, yeah. and it's like pay for this. All right, better pay for this, and like pay for that, then yeah. like, pay for this. Like yeah. God damn, man! Like yeah. can I can I just pay for one thing at, at the whole? If yeah. I want everything from you, right? Can I just pay gotcha. for one time? Yeah, hundred percent. I don't know about the revolving payments and all of that. We don't do that. But one thing I will tell you is, if you don't pay, you don't pay attention. I know that for That's a fact. fact. Yeah. All right, there's a re no rich person. Time is money. No rich person is gonna take time out of their their time, their busy schedule to come give you all the game that costs them millions of dollars to learn. Mm -hmm. You know how much I've invested in my education in just the past twelve months alone, bro. Like I can show you receipts, literally, like, bro. I paid Neo sixty bands. No, I believe exactly. So why would I give the next person all that game yeah. for free? And when you give them, matter of fact, just like this podcast right now, I've given you a lot of game on here. Yeah. A lot of people will watch this and they won't take in that information because it's free. Mm. But when they pay, they pay attention. Mm. All right. And then they go out there and they execute and then you get testimonials. And that's what I'm about. Impact. Bro, it's that's that's kind of like sad, though. Yeah. Like, I'm just a, a, a like a human part of me is be thinking like the fact that like, yo, you gave so much game. Like, yeah. And like, bro, you could really make some money off of this. If you just Implement. Execute. It, execute it, right? That's it. But the fact that you're not going to execute until you pay some money because that's when you feel like you lost something. Right. And like, now nah, I need to make, my, my, my money's got to be worth it. Yeah. It's like, bro, but you had so much game for free. There you go. That shit is crazy. Did also, you, have, you have anybody um ever, like, from your free uh workshops yeah. actually, like, implement something? 100%. Something People take the plays all the time and go execute. Yeah, mm -hmm. 100%. I encourage that. But... If you really want to take it to the next level, if you really want to make sure that you don't make the mistakes, it's always good to tap in and have a mentor. Like mm. Even in corporate America, when you get started in corporate America, the first thing they tell you to do is to find a mentor. Right. They assign a mentor to you. Why they do that? Mm. You need somebody that's already gone to where you're trying to get to. And in that way, you don't make the same mistakes. Mm. Mentorship helps you collapse time. Why would you want to spend years trying to learn this stuff? That's a fact. No, yeah. but I, I ain't satisfied, though. All right, hold up. Yeah. You got the free... <laughs> A seminar going yeah, on, right? Facts, yeah. What's some give me three pieces of game yeah. that people normally gotta pay for. That I'm gonna give away? No. That's you not that 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 that's not gonna be in a workshop, but yeah. if they if they if they say hey, I wanna pay for something else, right? Yeah. Give me three pieces of game. All right, so the well, first off, the workshop's only sixty minutes. I can only cover so much in sixty minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean the car runner industry is big. I mean, we're talking about there's different niches. What if you want to do so many? You can get started doing car sharing, ride sharing, private car rentals. I can't cover all of those things in 60 minutes. Mm. How we get into insurance, go deep into insurance, teach you guys how to do insurance, how to verify insurance. I can't do that in 60 minutes. Teaching you guys what I call KYC, how to know your customer, how to vet people. I can't do all of that in 60 minutes. All my marketing techniques, I can't do all that in 60 minutes. So still, I still need more time with people. And that's the reason why people need to also consider getting into investing in mentorship okay, okay and proximity being in the room that's a fact proximity is number one even if it's not even i got people tapping in just because they want proximity that's a fact bro no cap yeah <laughs> like bro it's like it's almost like college though like yeah. i tell people all the time like i don't think my degree was yeah. worth the money yeah but the networking and the lifelong friends you met out of it times 10 there you go i would pay for that today. every day there you today go. I would pay for that today. If Neo, if Neo or him five hundred told you, give me a hundred bands and you're locked in with us for life, 
all our plays, all our high level decisions, everything. Would you do it? I probably would. I ain't gonna lie. I see, there you go. I would. <laughs> I would sell everything I own. I probably would to do that. Mm mm mm. I'm just saying. Damn, bro. That's yo. When did you learn the the proximity thing? That was this new the th- three years or I seen it happen that? in Miami. I went to that conference. I saw what it did, bro. The friends. Funny enough, that thing changed my life so much that like the friends I have today are the people I met. From that, a lot of them are the people I met from that conference. Mm. My old friends, we don't even really have much to talk about anymore because my life has just completely changed since then. And they can't understand. It's, they it's can't sad, understand what it's like. They can't really understand, especially when you elevate. Hundred percent. And that's like that got to be frustrating because it's like, man, I'm elevating yeah. to do better for my family, for myself. Yeah. And it's like, I shit, I, I would assume you want your friends to come with you. They not. They don't understand that, bro. True story. The day me and my buddies, every Thursday religiously, we would go to a bar. There's this one bar in McKinney, Texas, where we'd always go and hang out and have drinks, right? The day I stopped going to that bar was once when I went there. When I started my car rental company, it just started taking off. Mm -hmm. And my friends started seeing me pulling up in all these fancy cars and showing up in Lambos. And one of them, he had had a few drinks. And then one of them, white, he, he says something. He's like, has the FBI called you yet about this? I'm like, bro, this is legit. What are you talking about? About what? Like, see, they, he couldn't even wrap his head around the fact that, yeah, I was. I started all of this in like a year or two years and making this kind of money. I must be doing something illegal. Mm. That's when I knew I had to change my circle of friends. Did that fuck you up, though? Hundred percent, bro. But it gave me motivation. Then I knew I was on the right track. Mm. Yeah. Damn, bro. Why you think I'm always in Atlanta? I come out here all the time because I need to be around this energy. We don't have it as much in Dallas. Mm. So I fly out here constantly. Just Why not to just be. move? Fuck it. Make this oh, right, we already discussed that. <laughs> I'm moving. <laughs> I'll be, I'm going to be here by the end of the year, most likely. No, 100%, bro. Bro, bro. Just because of that. For the inf- proximity. Mm. I will make that move because of proximity. Nah, I was telling I tell my friends all the time, bro. Like, And it might sound cliche, but just get in the room. 100%. Like, bro, like I've been witness to... S- so many things that I just probably wouldn't even thought of. Like yeah. I asked David today, like, yo, um, when you were selling t shirts, did you see this life for you? Yeah. And he was like, nah, I just wanted to be the biggest t shirt guy, right? There you go. And it's funny because like I never saw not saying I didn't want to be successful. I just wanted to have the biggest podcast, but then I get around people like David Shines, like Neo, hmm. and I and I see what they have and I'm like, oh no, nah, that's just that was yesterday goals. I want this. There you go. <laughs> like, there you go. I need this now. There you go. You see it. Yep, yep. And your dream keeps getting bigger and bigger because you're in proximity. Mm. That's why I went to the Greatness Mansion today. I had mm. to go see it, touch it. Yeah. Now I know, okay, this is attainable. Yeah. No. I'm going to go. I'm next. Yeah, I'm next. <laughs> yeah, there right. you go. What I got to do. Mm-hmm. There you go. Right, that was hard, bro. Yes, sir. Now, how can we get, um if we want to uh go to the... Uh, Class. The class. How, how can we do it? Yeah, 100%. Yo, y'all tap in. Go to um, the rental profit, the rentalprofits.com. You guys tap into the rentalprofits.com. You guys uh, sign up for the class. The free class, like I said, where I'll be dropping all the information you guys need to know to launch your successful six figure private car, car rental business in 60 days or less, y'all. Mm, and plug your Instagram and everything, man. Yes, sir. But once again, it's your boy. Mike the businessman. See, follow me on Instagram at Mike underscore the businessman. Also on YouTube, Mike underscore the businessman. This is great, man. Appreciate money, you, man. man. It's, it's so much money out there. Hundred percent. Get it, Mike J Hill is a wrap. We out. We out. Shit.